What the hell, citizen? As soon as I drop my Toyota Small Seconds video, this new Forza Titanium shows up in my inbox. And after spending a week with it on the wrist, I just had to make this video because this fixes almost all the shortcomings that I had for the Toyota, but I said almost. Guys, it's finally here. The collections feature on the WatchCrunch app. We've worked for months on this, and now you can track your collection in your profile. It's not just the list. You can track your wrist time, you can browse other people's collections and save them as your favorite. Collections feature was a greatly requested, so I hope you guys enjoy the implementation. Some say that integrated bracelets was just a fad, and I categorically reject this argument. Just because a style is enjoying its moment in the limelight, it doesn't make it a fad. I would say it's more of a trend, and like all trends, they're cyclical. This one had its roots all the way back to the 70s when Papa Genta dropped his iconic big three of Nautilus, Royal Oak, and Ingenieur on our heads. Those three watches really showed the Swiss watch industry the way forward out of the quartz crisis. But those watches are pretty far out of most collectors' budgets today. And our recent integrated style resurgence was initiated in 2021 by the Tissot PRX, a recreation of their own 70s C-Star. So what's so great about building the bracelet into the case? Well, watch and band now become one ensemble, with the bracelet transitioning naturally out of the case. And as seen with the Forza, with its angular shapes and strong facets on both the case and the links, this creates a cohesive design. How However, when executed poorly, integrated bracelet watches often falter on proportions. These watches tend to wear big naturally because the bracelet doesn't kind of taper right off the case. And the PRX exacerbates this problem by standing at 40 millimeters wide and having a functional lug to lug of over 51 due to non-articulating first links, making it wear more like a 42 on the wrist. The Forza luckily sidesteps this pitfall. It manages to both be 40.5 millimeters wide, but keeping its length down to just over 47 millimeters making this wear very comfortably on my six and a half inch wrist. And with a side profile of only 11 millimeters, this is a big improvement on the Toyota, and it makes for all day comfort. That's not to say this watch doesn't have wrist presence. The angular octagonal mid case is full of 70s flair. It's flat with like geometric shapes and polished bevels from which a round bezel arises encasing a flat sapphire crystal. I don't detect a whole lot of anti-reflective on this crystal so it can be a little glary in the sunlight but the whole package just feels robust and has a lot of like Vacheron Constantine vibes to me. The highlight of this watch has to be the dial. It offers a variety of colors, but I went with the small seconds version with the blue dial. And I really like my choice here. The texture is somewhere between like really expensive stationary and maybe like icy surface of a lake. The latter is right in Grand Seiko's wheelhouse, which is saying a lot for a $600 watch. The texture really kind of catches the light from different angles, and I just find myself staring at this dial on my wrist all the time. The elements on the dial are laid out classically with applied baton markers and stick hands that are very legible. There is a date at the three, and by offsetting the small seconds dial at the 430, it's got enough like wabi-sabi to keep the thing from looking too stale. We get a black minute track in the periphery, adding another kind of contrasting element, and there's enough loom here to be serviceable. What can I say? The design of this watch is just easy on the eyes. It's classic enough and inoffensive, but without being boring. And I mentioned the watch's titanium. Yes, we get a well-designed titanium integrated bracelet watch that is mechanical for 600 bucks. That's a headline in and of itself. The integrated bracelet design does use more metal than regular bracelets, so these watches tend to be heavy, and being titanium, it's like half the weight of a steel model, keeping the weight down and just making this watch feel nice and airy. But it's not too light, because that was like my problem with the Pelagos 39. The weight made that watch feel kind of like a toy. Not the case here. It's heavy enough to feel substantial, but the titanium construction just makes it more comfortable. And since we're on the topic of price, let's talk about what else you can get sort of in this tier. What's the competition here? Well, not a lot if we really want to stay under a thousand because we have to forego other big name contenders like Maurice Lacroix, they have the Icon and the Riviera, um, the Tudor Royale. We mentioned the PRX, which is the elephant in the room. It's actually priced a couple hundred dollars more retail than the Forza. And look, 
The PRX was great in 2021. No disrespect if you bought a PRX, but the times have changed and we've just made better watches since then. I would also choose this over Citizen's own Toyoza, which I reviewed a couple weeks ago. That watch wears bigger, it's heavier because it's made of steel, um, the bracelet is worse, and it's thicker. Now, there is the Christopher Ward 12, which is priced just over a thousand. Great watch, but I have to say, I haven't connected with it very well. Maybe it's because the dial is a bit overdone with a pattern that looks like it can grate cheese. There's also the Nevada Gretchen F77, which looks good in pictures, but when I got hands on one in a trade show, I just really couldn't feel the build quality coming through. I would say the sort of left field obscure watch that actually is a direct competitor might be the Dorenzo. I review their DRZ4 model and they've come out with another one since then, but that watch was finished extremely well, very impressive, and you're getting, I think, a Salita Swiss movement in there. It's a bit more avant-garde in terms of design, but if you're into that as an integrated watch, it really left an impression on me. So the Forza is great, but it's not without its faults. There's a couple corners that they had to cut to bring this watch under budget, understandably. With regards to the movement, the Chrono version and the three-hander, they receive Citizen's EcoDrive, which is solar-powered quartz that boasts nine second accuracy per month. That would be the option I'd recommend if you just wanna kinda of set it and forget it. But for the mechanical heads out there, you'd go for the small seconds, which is driven by the 8213 automatic movement visible through a display case back. It's honestly not much to look at. They seem to have nickel plated this one, so it's got like a gold hue, but it's still a very basic movement without much in the way of decorations. The rotor unidirectionally winds, so sometimes you can feel the watch wobble. Um, it does have hacking and hand winding, which is nice, but don't expect super high accuracy from this base level movement. The crown is push-pull, giving the watch an advertised 100 meters of water resistance, and it has 45 hours of power reserve. All in all, it's a serviceable movement, but it's far from what Citizen Miyota has available on their shelves. The other detail that I find a little less excusable is the clasp. So we have this wonderfully robust looking bracelet. The links are geometric, they are brushed with these like polished interfaces between adjacent links for a really industrial look. But when you open the clasp, the ruse is exposed. You get a twin button deployant, it works just fine, but the whole mechanism is stamped metal. I know you have to cut corners somewhere at this price, but this just kind of cheapens the whole experience. In my book, keeps this from being a complete home run. That said, I would still recommend this watch to my friends, and I can't think of a better watch for the price. But what do you think? Is the Forza on your list? Are you gonna sell your PRX to trade up for one? Let's chat more on the WatchCrunch app. Go check out my collection I just uploaded in my profile. I'll see you in the next one.